Welcome back to another episode of Road to Pro. Today, we're going to talk about five bar defense. This is actually probably one of the most important things in the game. Being able to block your opponent's five bar so that they can't get it on their three bar is exceptionally important when it comes to winning a match in foosball. I don't necessarily have the world's greatest five bar defense, but I definitely have some tips and tricks that should help you guys get a little bit better at blocking other people's five bars. Just by knowing a little bit more about their five bar and finding something that they're not good at so that you can exploit it. Let's jump on the table, talk about a couple different five bar defenses that you can use to help figure out what they're not good at. So most people, especially tournament players, tend to pass on the near wall. Not all, but a large majority. Some do pass on the far wall, but again, most of the time you're going to be dealing against people that pass near wall. <clears throat> because of that, they have a slight edge of being able to see the ball on their side of the table a little bit better, and inversely so do you. But when they're passing on their side, it's a harder angle for you to see everything. That's one of the main reasons that you see them pass near wall. It feels comfortable. Now, when it comes to five bar defense, there's a lot of things you can do. You can kind of shake in front of the ball, say they have a brush series. You can shake really fast in front of the ball in hopes to get a pass. So if you're towed forward, the ball, if they hit you, is going to come back to them. But if you know when they're going to pass, you can angle your guy back to catch the pass. Something I like to do in trying to test someone is actually sit on the wall. I'll throw a couple little flutters in to see if they're willing to pass at a guy while he's stationary. If that doesn't work, sometimes it's nice to jump up into the lane. I'll also jump into the lane and then angle my guy back. By jumping into the lane and angling back, hopefully you'll catch their lane pass. The hard part about 5 bar defense is it's not necessarily so much a guessing game as a learning game. You have to learn the tiniest little tell they might have in their 5 bar to get a slight edge. If you notice somebody who's dragging the ball every time they do a wall pass, that little bit of information might give you an answer. It might tell you that that's exactly how and the only way how they can do their wall pass. But if they, if they never drag it and then go lane, well, again, you have a tell. If it's only that they can do a lane off of a tic-tac, well, now you've got them. Now you know to kind of sit in the lane the second you see this drag, dive wall. And you're going to block their wall pass. It's really a simplistic game on the five bar, but you have to be in the right places at the right times and kind of bait out the right things. You can never be afraid to just sit on the wall. You can't be afraid of that, because if you're never on the wall, they can always get a wall pass. And don't forget, if you dive too hard at the wall, you might get called for a jar, or a reset depending on where the ball is. And that's not going to be very good for you. So I very, very, very highly suggest being okay with fluttering, moving back and forth, and being able to sit on the wall. If you find that they're always passing through the lane and almost never passing through the wall, stay up higher. And keep staying in front of the ball while they pass. A lot of times I've also found that there's a lot of people that don't like a really slow five bar defense. If you're just kind of slow and just kind of sit in places, people have a tendency to pass into you because they get confused because they're so used to people just doing this on the five bar with no rhyme or reason and then all of a sudden uh, they hit the wall really hard. Well, you want to stay controlled. You never want to just be fluttering and flying around. You want to have a game plan. A little neat trick that I found that catches a lot of people off guard is I'll stay low. I won't come all the way up here to try and catch a high brush pass. I'll stay nice and low because then I'll make it look like I'm going to block a brush pass that's not high enough and then come up a little bit higher to catch the really high brush pass. 
just the little subtle things that you can do on the five bar to try and keep them off guard is exceptionally crucial. Some things to always keep in mind. Just like when we were talking about the five bar, or the shot selections, my apologies. Just like when we were talking about shot selections and how the ball can be placed in different positions, the five bar is similar to that. If they're on this side of the ball, it's going to be easier for them to go up. If they're on this side of the ball, it's going to be easier, easier for them to go down along the wall. If they're really smart, they'll have a real tight hover and not give you a tell. But when they do that, sometimes they lose their ability to brush really deep. So you're going to want to try and stay in front of the ball and bait up and down and look for things that will give you an answer on how to block their 5 bar. A lot of young rookie players do this little pass where they kind of brush it through. Something to think about when it comes to that is if you see them doing it and they're coming down this way, pop all the way up with your guy. It's going to be a great help and it's going to allow for you to get on them. Like when it comes to 5 bar defense, it's more of a mental game than a guessing game. You really need to figure out what they're good at on the five bar and find any kind of tell that you can get your hands on. Once you have those tells, you can start forcing them into things they're not comfortable doing. Something I've also found against a lot of rookie or beginner players is they're not great at catching just a straight lane pass. I would highly suggest forcing young or newer players that you're worried about to catch lane passes sit on the wall. A wall pass is much easier to execute and much easier to catch. Where a lane pass is going to be more difficult because it has to be caught and a guy just doesn't have to sit there to catch it. When you start learning to force them to where they're not comfortable, that's when you can really get a good idea of how to block their 5 bar. Also, don't get suckered, and this is something that's very hard to do, <clears throat> don't get suckered into following the ball everywhere. When you see people tic tac the ball around, it can easily be a setup. They could bounce and go lane, <clears throat> they can tic tac around, and that type of thing will get you to jump to the wall. But if you're flexible and you keep a real loose grip on the rods, you'll be able to handle it just fine. You never want to have a really tight grip on the rods. You always want to keep it nice and soft so that you can catch a ball if it's flying around or if they try and pass it through, you can just pop back and it's not going to roll right back to them. Something I learned a long time ago from a great player is the more somebody goes down to the wall and it comes back to them, the more they should actually do it. Because one, it's safe, it means they, the ball comes back to them almost every time, and two, if you're not there, it's a pass. So if you find that you're constantly giving the ball back to them, ease up your grip. Maybe even angle your guy back a tiny bit more when you're ready for that pass. This way, you'll cradle the ball and catch it, opposed to allowing it go back to their five bar and then giving them another chance. Again, you're going to want to remind yourself that being towed forward or even straight up and down isn't always going to be the best. You're going to want to fluctuate between different angles and different locations to try and catch them off guard and get the ball in transition when the ball's moving. It may seem rather difficult, but with a little bit of time and paying close attention to what they're doing on their 5 bar. It can be just that simple. I knew a player a long time ago that he had a Tic Tac series. Uh, every time he wanted to go lane, you'd hear that noise right there. But if he went wall, it was a slightly different noise. It had a longer sound to it. So just off of the sound of his Tic Tac, I was able to figure out if he wanted to go lane or wall. 
gave me a huge advantage and actually allowed me to beat him at a Kentucky State tournament later on. So keep in mind, guys, the tiniest thing can give you all of the edge when it comes to defending someone's 5-bar. Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Road to Pro. If you like this video, do me a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up down, down below and also leave a comment. Side note, the subscribe button's right over here. If you like this episode and want to watch another episode of Road to Pro, click over here. Thanks guys. Happy foozin'.